Hi everyone, I'm going to make an, uh, something in my art journal and I'm going to play with puzzle pieces. Now I've done uh, many things with the uh, puzzle pieces and there are a few things that you should uh, remember. It doesn't matter what you're going to do with it, uh, just a uh, few things that you need to know. First of all, number them it doesn't matter i am always numbering them from uh, the back and from the front because after you're uh, doing whatever you are doing on it on it you if you need to assemble them uh, again you can't find it if it's not numbered the other uh, tip i have is that don't uh, work too hard on sending this side of the puzzle pieces if you uh, want to paint uh, no matter what paint just flip it over and use this side you don't need to work so hard on sending this uh, glossy uh, print it uh, on the front and if you need to if you are not uh, going to paint and only glue something then it doesn't really matter you can glue on here and on here without sending and doing any preparation so uh, I'm always buying uh, this kind of puzzles in my cheap store and if you don't have uh, things like that in your cheap store there's probably you can find in some thrift store so uh, I'm going to use several, I've already taken some pieces and uh, I've uh, prepared them but I want to use several pieces. It all started that I wanted some focal point but I wanted the focal point from uh, puzzle pieces. So I took uh, this uh, nine pieces of puzzle uh, and as you can see I've put a uh, masking tape now I'm moving this pieces aside for now I also have more puzzle pieces in other um, sizes I've got this and just so you will know if you have something like that and uh, don't throw this away you can do a uh, really nice things with it and I will show you uh, an example in a minute what you can do with it and there is another thing it can all if you have two of this it can always be the uh, like the bookends of uh, an album or an art journal it can be the cover to a to an album or an art journal so keep this and I will show you in a minute an example of what you can do with this stuff if you don't want it to, as a cover to an art journal. And I also have more of these little uh, puzzle pieces. They are all, I'm going to use them as in my background to add texture to my page. So I've got these uh, nine uh, puzzle pieces. And I had this paper. This paper is from, I bought it uh, when I was in Budapest. It's from Bomo Art. They have a, a website. They do international uh, shipping. And they have beautiful things. I didn't know what to do and couldn't uh, get myself out of the store. So, what I've done is take the nine pieces I've uh, I've picked my uh, from this page the focal point that I want and I traced it I've already done it so to not waste time and of course fussy cut it so here it is this is my focal point now it's not going to stay like this I want it in pieces so uh, what I can do is two things I can glue it uh, like this then flip it over and go with an exacto knife and start cutting the pieces or 
I can uh, take my masking tape and start tracing each piece on on here and then fussy cut it whatever is easier to do like so here I go tracing it taking nail uh, scissors because I want to use the curve of the here to cut the curves here and when you are cutting it try to be inside the line but it doesn't really matter and I will show you what to do if it's not if it doesn't turn out exactly the size of your piece For the straight uh, edges, you can use uh, regular scissors. The curve is changing, so I'm flipping the scissors and again using the curve so it will be easier to cut. Okay, so now I've got this piece and this piece. I'm going to use my silicone glue because it's easier for me. I most most of the time I will use this, and this uh, want uh, less chance for my uh, paper to curl. Uh, you who this is local brand from the cheap store. If you want silicone glue, this is a silicone glue. You who. So I'm putting down a nice coat of this silicone glue, especially on the edges because I don't want any peeling of my page. Here we go. Now, if, like you can see, I don't know if you can see <laughs> uh, it sticks uh, more than if you can uh, cut it good if you don't if you can't cut it like here just wait for it to dry and then use a simple nail uh, <laughs> again <laughs> uh, forgot the the word for it you know what I mean and just go like this and make it to the same size and um, now I'm going to do all the pieces the same way and the only thing uh, more that I'm going to do with it is I'm going to go all over my edges with uh, this distress ink walnut stain uh, Tim Holtz the only one Tim, Tim Holtz I've got <laughs> another find from I think this was from Madrid so I'm taking, this is some kind of uh, makeup brush and I'm using it to go over my edges and it's easier for me like that. I have more control over where I go, especially uh, where I need to get in inside the piece, like so. Uh, for straight edges, I can use a makeup sponge like this and here we go but when I need a, to get inside curves I prefer to use a, some kind of brush I've done several pieces already, also 
a smaller ones like this and they are going to be in my art journal page uh, they are this, uh, from the same uh, paper that I've cut my uh, focal point here we go after I'll be sure that everything is dry if it's the silicone uh, glue underneath and uh, this uh, ink only after I'll be sure everything is dry I'm going to put a coat of a uh, water-based uh, varnish clear water-based varnish so it will uh, keep so uh, I'm putting this aside this is part of my focal point and I'm going to do the other pieces and only when they are finished I'll get back and we'll continue with the art journal page. I'm back. So I finished with all the pieces of my focal point and uh, here they are and I'm going to move them uh, aside for now because I need to work on my background. Now uh, I've a number them uh, on the back just in case of course it's only nine pieces but why <laughs> make it hard on myself uh, later when I want to put them in the same order so I'm going to take this uh, beginning of an art journal it's the one I showed you how to make back to back from a, a pad paper taking a pages out of a pen uh, of a watercolor paper and putting them back to back so now all what I want to do is glue down lots and piece a lot of pieces of a puzzle and uh, because they are the ones that are going to give me the texture to the whole page I've already done texture with uh, tags and te and with the numbers and letter stickers that you have watched me do so this time the texture for this page is going to be all these pieces and i am just gluing them wherever randomly i don't really care the only thing is that I'm not going to put them here on the crease because this is cardboard and it won't fold so that's the only thing that I need to watch out for oh and I wanted to tell you another thing about making the puzzle pieces uh, here if uh, you've got a thick cardboard for the puzzle and you've got like uh, white edges or something that really bothers you just take a permanent marker and go over the edges edges like so I don't I've got some kind of a uh, gray stuff here so it doesn't really bother me I'm going to leave it as is so that's another thing uh, when working with the puzzle pieces So I'm going to uh, glue down all these pieces and now I'm going to put down all these little uh, pieces and after that I'm just going uh, to put uh, to cover everything with gesso so I will have a nice cover for a uh, for my page for a paint which I haven't decided yet what kind of uh, background paint I want just as you can see taking pieces from the puzzle 
and sticking them down. Here we go. So I I'm I'm thinking to save time on my recording, I'm going to continue sticking down pieces, cover it with gesso, and then I'll be back. There is nothing to say in me uh, putting gesso on my page. Uh, so I'll be back when uh, the page is ready for uh, putting uh, the paint. I'll be back. I'm back. So I've got here uh, all kinds of uh, acrylic uh, uh, paints. <clears throat> I picked uh, things that will uh, correspond with the uh, colors I have on my paper that I've used. And I'm just going to play around. This is uh, just some kind of uh, makeup soft brush which I'm going to use. And uh, putting down uh, uh, the paint and there again there is no uh, reason I'm going to keep changing uh, the color and blending like so I'm just changing it as I go and working uh, a little bit fast so it uh, it will blend as long as it's a uh, wet it blends once it's dry it's uh, quite difficult to work <laughs> i'm thinking maybe i need a little bit water on my brush so again it won't uh, it won't dry fast I'm only picking a little bit of color each time on my brush so it makes a variation to the color I, I, I'm using this is a pearlescent uh, pink and I'm using it as a base to most of this uh, background and if I don't like something I just go back and I'm adding more like here I want a lighter color in the middle so I just went in and added I need water I just want all kinds of shades on my uh, background. And I hope it will work. It wasn't planned. But if it doesn't, <laughs> I'll just cover everything with gesso. I really like how uh, this uh, suede color is working with my pinks, so I'm going to put it in several places as I go. And you need to go uh, on the to all the nooks and crannies uh, from your uh, texture, which is the puzzle pieces.
trying to blend more the colors So basically that's what I'm doing, <laughs> I'm not, I'm just playing with the, sh uh, the shades here or all the pings and suede and I've got here some kind of what soft coral, it's this orangey thing is soft coral. I usually don't use all uh, this much pink in my uh, projects, but I think it's toned down with the suede and the coral and the flesh uh, paint. This is only the first coat I will be uh, adding to it. I'm already thinking that I want to stamp with a... I've got a stamp of a crackle, yeah, crackle stamp. So I'm thinking I'm going to place it randomly on my page. Okay, so I'm uh, going to continue with this and I'm going to come back when everything is covered because it's taking me quite some time and we'll see how we go from there. I'll be back. I'm back. So this is my background and now I'm taking a brush with hot bristles and taking a very dry paint from the brown uh, paint and I'm just doing something like that uh, underneath each one of my pieces just to give it more uh, dimensionality, more uh, depth. To, uh, So it will uh, pop pop up from my uh, page, and now I'm thinking I should have sealed everything with a uh, white glue. So then, if I'm going over as like here, a piece that I don't want to be uh, with brown, I can wipe it off with the baby wipe but I haven't done it so I'll just live with with this with what's uh, with what I've got just trying to be more uh, careful and it really doesn't matter just to add a little bit maybe I'll take something smaller let's see <clears throat> so that's it that's what I'm doing now and afterwards I'm going to start uh, stamping around with the stamp I've told you about 
So I'm thinking again, I'm gonna come back when I'm finished uh, putting all this shading to my pieces. I'm back. Uh, I finished uh, putting under each piece a brown color so it will pop and I also added from the pearlescent pink a, a little bit on top of each piece also to give highlights and now I'm just going to take this crackle a stamp and stamp it all over my page for a more uh, distressed uh, look and I don't mind if it's going on top of uh, the puzzle pieces it just adds to everything very randomly <laughs> I think I need to stop. That's it. Stop. Okay. Now, where is my uh, focal point? Which I've done all this uh, crazy work just for this. Here is my focal point. And now I need to fix it to the page. And yes, I know uh, that was my planning. I don't want to put it together like this, like, as it is like a puzzle. I want it. This is how I want it. I want a uh, broken down to pieces, like so. Focal point. So <laughs> that was what I was aiming for here we go I'm just uh, positioning this stuff yeah like so now I need uh, to take this is a um, double sided foam tape only in uh, little squares so it will give me um, thickness to attach all these pieces to my page I can also do it with a glue gun but I hate using glue gun and I just have the neck for it to burn, burn myself so I'll skip the, the joy of uh, using a hot glue gun and I'm gonna use this instead here we go let's see like this like this so that space is underneath it needs to be first go yeah that's what I'm going for so I'm going to uh, piece all this uh, stick all these pieces and I'll come back I'm back so all this color here in the back uh, is completely dry and it's kind of I don't know too much Barbie pink for me I don't like it it changed uh, as it uh, dried and I still need to put these pieces that I've uh, made all around my page but I don't like this uh, pink in the background so I'm going to spray a little bit uh, with my homemade sprays these are from gel food coloring with water and let's see if I can do something 
and yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, couldn't watch this pink anymore. And a little bit of brown on the edges. Of course, when this is uh, going to dry, it also will change, so I will have to wait and see. So again, I'll be back once everything is uh, is dry, and then I'll attach the finishing uh, pieces to my page. I'll be back. I'm back. So this is my page. I've uh, put down these pieces the uh, same way I've done this ones, and I just went over uh, the edges with again. With the same ink and distress ink and this uh, makeup uh, sponge so this is my page it was <laughs> quite work uh, to finish it it always is with puzzle pieces i hope you got some uh, ideas and you liked it thank you for watching and i'll be seeing you in my next video bye for now